Genesis of Universal 7, Governance and Management Chapter 1. Cybernetics Cybernetics was defined in 1947 as, control and communications, in the animal and the machine, during the Macy Foundation meetings, in New York. It was certainly a transdisciplinary effort, by some of the most brilliant scientists of the time, some of them, involved in the efforts to win World War II. Norbert Wiener, has been recognized, as the father of cybernetics. He was the mathematical boy genius, and later professor MIT, who had been working on complex statistical equations, on how to synchronize, and aim anti-aircraft guns, to shoot down German bombers. He was the author, of the book Cybernetics. Wiener's book, recognizes Mexican researcher, Dr. Arturo Rosenbluth, as the discoverer of the importance of the feedback information principle. Together, they saw a connection between the mechanical world, and the world of living things. Both, machines and animals, use an information feedback loop, to guide their behavior towards some goal or purpose. Until then, it had been nature's secret on purposeful behavior. Traditional, cause and effect science, could explain the physics and chemistry involved in producing movement, but had been unable to explain, how complex processes generated and sustained life. The Macy Foundation meetings, lasted from 1947 to 1953. Some historians, call them, the Big Bang of the Information Age. The most visible, and immediate success, of the Macy meetings, had to do with computers. Information feedback, allowed automation to control programmable memory computers. This other effort, was presented by another notable member of the Macy group. Today, John von Neumann is considered as, the designer of the architecture of the stored program, electronic, computer, which he introduced there for the first time. Talks about information feedback, not only produced computers, it also generated and influenced, many other sciences. Neuroscience. Warren McCulloch. Informatics, Alan Turing. The Theory of Communications, Claude Shannon. Control theory, Ross Ashby proposes a new definition of cybernetics, which has a much wider coverage. Cybernetics, studies the behavior, of all sorts of machines. He defines a system as a list of interconnected variables. A short time later, Skinner invented behaviorism. Talcott Parson created, a new sociology, with society as a web of interactions. John McCarthy, started the field of artificial intelligence. Robotics, George C. Devil. Political Science, by Karl Deutsch, his book, The Nerves of Government. Complex Adaptive Systems, research begun by the Santa Fe Institute in 1984, in New Mexico, using high-speed computers, to examine artificial life. Now let's go into this area, here, called Management Cybernetics. Chapter 2. Management Cybernetics. Stafford Beer takes ideas from Wiener, von Neumann, McCulloch and Ashby and many of his own, to create management cybernetics. He produces a third definition of cybernetics, Beer calls cybernetics, the science of effective organization. He focuses on the communications and control, in all viable systems, 
meaning any organization that shows a capability for an independent existence. These include cells, tissues, organs, the human body, the human person, and all types of animal, human and social organizations, including the nation state, and even the planet itself. Borrowing from Beer and Ashby, here is the basic unit of a viable system. An operation with its management, immersed in a relevant environment. All three in turn, immersed in an overall environment. It makes a big difference, if your company is in the US, or in Mexico, or in India. To be viable, means to succeed in the environment your company is in. The viable system model, is a direct application, of Ashby's law of requisite variety. This same two-way control loop, is applied many, many times, throughout every communication channel in the model. Shown here, is an indication on how Ashby's law of requisite variety, applies between the three elements. Management is a two-step process. Management, controls the operation, and in turn, the operation controls the relevant business environment. The key to overall control, is a balance in both circular feedback loops. According to Ashby's law, to achieve control, the regulator must match the variety of the controlled system. Control variety, must have requisite variety, in each of the two steps. Balance, is achieved by amplifying control variety, and filtering perturbance variety. Not everything that happens in the business environment, is relevant. Shown here, is how the viable system model emerges, from the structure of the human nervous system. Several individual operations, are parts that come together, to become a higher level viable system. Therefore, the viable system model follows nature's formula to attack complexity. The VSM is a recursive structure, where the parts and the whole, have exactly the same structure. Russian dolls, are a good metaphor for recursion at work. Chapter 3, Viable System Model Applications there are, innumerable applications, of Stafford Beer's viable system model. The most notable, is of course, the famous Cybersyn project. An intervention by Stafford Beer, and Fernando Flores, that intended to create a real-time management system, for the public economic sector, of the Chilean economy, under President Salvador Allende. The effort, was cut short by the military coup, and I end day's suicide. You can stop the video, to make this exercise. On the left, you have the characteristics and attributes of the Cybersyn project. And on the right, you have those of the current management paradigm. Then, you can compare to your own company. Many applications, are linked to members of the Meta Forum, a group of Stafford Beer's followers. For instance, and most notably, Angelo Espinosa and John Walker, who have organized a whole community, using the VSM. They have written this book, A Complexity Approach to Sustainability. Stephen Bruce, applied the VSM to map out the control and communications structure of British Telecom's managerial organization. Jose Perez Rios, from Spain, used the VSM to redesign the campus of the University of Coruña, Spain. Martin Fifner, a former partner at Malik Management Centrum, has done extensive use of the viable system model to redesign and restructure several dozen companies. Also, has written a book given great details of his work. The third dimension of organizations is the organization's nervous system, again, control and communications. Currently, Malik Management Centrum is using, and developing, Beer's ideas on the VSM, and combining them with other models, to redesign the Volkswagen Corporation, in order to meet Tesla's electric car challenge. 
One last application of the VSM worth mentioning, is the very recent effort by Marcus Schwaninger, and other researchers. They used the VSM, to diagnose the performance and failures of the Helvetic Confederation, in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. Marcus, is also the author of the book Intelligent Organizations, based on the Viable System Model. Chapter 4. Why Universal 7? Introduction. Businesses are making life and death decisions with increasing frequency. Are you, and your company, organized to face this kind of challenge? Do you know the ABCs of learning, adaptive, and viable organizations? What if you have structural problems, you are unaware of? Hello! This presentation of U7 Governance and Management, is meant to bring you up to date, about your options. The world of business, requires an urgent change in management culture. It must undergo a transition, from the clockwork, mechanical, hierarchical organization paradigm, to complex, cybernetic, viable organization paradigm. The world of certainty is gone. Things are changing with such speed, that it is impossible to make lasting predictions about the future. New threats, and new opportunities, arise everywhere. Unannounced. Clockwork corporations have been dying at an alarming rate. Just look at the changes in the Fortune 500 list, in the last 10 years. This means, that managers must make sure, that their organizations are structured in such a way, that regardless of who is in charge, they will be able to cope, and do well in a very hostile, post-COVID, business environment. The U7 model, is based in cybernetic laws, that have to do with effective communications and control, such as those identified in the human nervous system. It comprises, the best management know-how, anywhere. The scientific and technological know-how, is cybernetics. Only within its domain, does the digital revolution make sense. What modern corporations need, even if they do not know this, is an organization structure, that mimics the human nervous system, and provides real-time management information. Without it, the digital revolution runs the risk of doing, the wrong things faster. On the right, are some of the people who have been practicing and developing the cybernetic management solutions in giant corporations, as I said above, such as Volkswagen and British Telecom. Also, applying the laws of viability to communities, and governments. The four M's, men, materials, machinery, money, have been displaced, as the priorities and concerns of modern managers. Certainly, time and motion studies made a big contribution to management science since the early 50s. The same can be said, about TQM, BPM, Six Sigma, the balance scorecard, and other much more recent management fads. These techniques however, have not stopped many huge corporations from going bankrupt, or prevented them from missing exceptional opportunities for growth. Examples are everywhere, think of Lehman Brothers, Comp. USA, Kodak, on the one hand, and Xerox, and Yahoo on the other. The truth is, that the centuries-old traditional management paradigm is obsolete. Hierarchical organizations lack the adaptability and learning capabilities, that are needed to grow and prosper in a very complex business environment. The newer information processing technologies, are going faster than the manager's capability to keep track of them. What to do about it? After learning of the Cyberson project, I seek Stafford in 1980, and became his friend. Together, we tried hard to implement a similar project in the Mexican government. We were given access to many government departments, but nothing happened. In the early 80s, many people in the Mexican government had a hard time telling the difference between hardware and software. After almost a year in Mexico, Stafford left. His memorandum to Mexico's president, turned out to be an omen about Mexico's dim future, because of the rampant corruption. His phrase the purpose of a system is what the system does, has made a lot of more sense since that frustrating experience, with the government and its bureaucracy. And, it is getting worse by the day. 
After Stafford's death in 2002, many of his friends, colleagues, students and followers, came together in a group named the Metaforum. It was created to honor his ideas and to pursue new applications. The Metaforum has organized conferences almost every year. Its web page will provide much more access to Stafford's biography and thinking. As a friend of Stafford, through the many years after his final goodbye, I have worked at making his ideas easier to understand and to apply. I became aware that there are many companies which have applied the VSM by serendipity. For instance, John Walker discovered that the famous and huge Mondragon Cooperative in Spain had all the elements of Stafford Beer's VSM in place. I then made another discovery. It turns out that same Mex, the Mexican cement plant in Monterrey, Mexico, my own hometown, was a living example of many of Stafford's ideas. It turned out that its CIO was present at a conference that Stafford Beer gave at the Monterey Tech, in April 1990. Hela C. O. Iniguez had been chosen by Lorenzo Zambrano, to establish a systems department at Samex. Hela C. O. made an intensive use of communications and computing technology. Together, they took Samex sales from 400 million a year, to more than 5 billion 10 years later. The amazing Samex story became a case study at many American universities, and its management style became known worldwide as the Samex way. Hella C. O. and Lorenzo saw Samex very differently from their predecessors. Samex was not about selling bags of cement. It was about finding and filling their clients' needs. Every company owes itself to its relevant environment. Stafford was probably the first to see it in these terms, Hella CEO had the smarts to start thinking in terms of a new management language. He sought the advice of none other than Fernando Flores, the Chilean engineer, who brought Stafford to IN Day and started the Cyberson project. However, it must be said that Flores never ever mentioned Stafford Beer or the VSM model. This I asked both Hella CEO and Lorenzo. So in many ways say Mex was applying cybernetic management but without using the VSM explicitly. I have evolved Universal 7 Governance and Management, from Stafford Beer's VSM. Universal 7 stands for, the 7 systemic functions that must work together, in any human goal-seeking organization, viable or not. I have added security, and substituted sporadic audits with an anomaly detection channel, to be up to date with supervision capabilities of people with a smartphone at hand. Also to include the administration of justice into government models. This is how the seven systemic functions of a governance or management system work together. It must be recognized that each one is influenced by the rest. For instance, security and identity will leave their mark everywhere, as other functions are active. Complexity is the stuff of management, said Stafford Beer, more than 30 years ago. This British expert on operations research, and creator of management cybernetics, was the very first to recognize that the 4Ms were being displaced from being a manager's major concerns. In their place, modern managers should be able to deal with complexity as the number one issue, and viability, ahead of short-term profits, as the number one challenge. This meant the need to create a new language, based on the cybernetic laws of control and communications, which he then translated into management cybernetics. To this end, he developed the viable system model, which explains how this new knowledge is applied in nature, and in all types of human organizations. The U7 is a hard-thought adaptation of the VSM, that explicitly refers only to business and government applications. Call it a more user-friendly model, about governance and management, available for managers and government officials. Key NAFIN Framework During the past 20 years, Dave Snowden and Han been developing the Cinefin framework. This is a teaching device to educate decision makers all over the world with a graphical description of the type of system they are involved with. The Cinefin framework 
looks very much like a window with four panes. On the bottom left pane, are the chaotic systems. On the bottom right pane, are the simple systems. Above them, are the complicated systems, and to their left, on top of the chaos pane, is where you find complex systems. The framework is much richer at detail, but the main point being made, is that complicated systems, are very different from complex systems. Most management fads, are directed at creating complicated system solutions, and though still useful, they will never solve complex systems. U7 embraces, the wisdom of the Cinefin framework, but makes a finer distinction. The complex pane, contains complex adaptive systems as Snowden teaches, but also viable systems, as described by Stafford Beer. Neither complicated systems, nor complex adaptive systems, can fully describe the structure of viable systems. And, within the viable system classification, targeted specially at business and government, and not naturally occurring systems, is the Universal 7 Governance and Management System. The Universal 7 Governance and Management System, is a much simpler version, of the viable system model, specialized in human organizations, whether public or private. Quite obviously, it is a recursive structure, where the subsystems, have the same structure, as the main organization. It looks like a bullet-shaped figure, containing other little bullets, inside its operation. Every system, has seven systemic functions to perform. These are, identity, planning, director, operation, coordination, anomaly detection, and security. No human organization can be viable, if any of these seven systemic functions are missing. The U7 model shows, the system as an input-output system, much at the same way any metabolism works. In a business environment, information, energy and material inputs, are processed to produce value, that is then exchanged with the environment to generate a profit. Given its cybernetic focus, the U7 model is not complete without the interconnections, between each of the seven systemic functions and the inputs and outputs interfaces. Here is a map, with the 18 control loops that must be in place to cover every possible situation. No organization chart will ever give you such an explicit detail as the U7 model does. Given the recursive nature of the model, these control loops ensure, that nothing is left to chance. The model is exhaustive, and the mapping can drill as deep down as necessary, to identify and locate, any source of trouble, in any operation or the teams working within them. As you can tell, the Universal 7 Governance and Management System, provides a very useful understanding, of what makes a government, or a corporation work. It is the simplest, and easiest way, to describe any human organization, regardless of its purpose. It provides the most efficient language possible, to understand and communicate, how complexity is confronted, in a natural way. It shows we have a lot to benefit, from switching our thinking to management cybernetics. Thank you for watching. The music in this video is a courtesy of Kubernetes, the movie, produced by Javier Levis.